Welcome to Central Methodist University men's basketball. Eagles tonight take on Central Bible College Saints. Central 1-0 on the season. The Saints 1-1. We're in Puckett Fieldhouse. Been a big day of athletics here at Central Methodist and Fayette. As we have had a men's a football victory over the number seven team in the nation as the CMU men defeated Baker University by the score of 21-19. And that clinches at least a tie for the Southern Division Championship in the Heart of America, which is an automatic berth to the football tournament. So that went on today in an exciting game on Senior Day. We've got soccer going on right now down at the football field. We had volleyball earlier. They won in three straight sets, and now we've got men's basketball. Yesterday we had women's basketball as the CMU women defeated Indiana Wesleyan. They were the number 11-ranked team in the nation coming in. Central Methodist women were ranked 17th, and the Lady Eagles defeated Indiana Wesleyan by 31 points. So it's been a good weekend thus far. Coach Sherman wants to make it a clean sweep. Soccer down on the soccer field. The women in quarterfinal action in Heart of America Conference. They'd like to pile up on Clark a little bit. They beat them a couple of weeks ago. And uh, they'd like to do that again. So this is Charlie Brown. Thanks for tuning in. We've got the men's action. We've got starters for you. We'll go over those for you real quickly, and then we'll let the uh, PA announcer, Paul Linhart, get those for you as well. So let me get my scoreboard off of there. For the Saints, their starting lineup goes like this. Rodrigo Nunez, a 6'9 junior, and it lists him as a guard, but I'm not buying that. Uh, from Rio Grande, Texas, Rio Grande City, Texas. Starts number 12, Trey Black, a six foot senior out of Choctaw, Oklahoma. Number 20, Adris Hamilton, a 5'10 guard junior from Glasgow, Missouri, just up the road a little bit. 21, Cruz Mendoza, 5'10 guard senior out of Alton, Texas. And number 23, Andrew Johnson, a 6'3 senior guard out of Memphis, Tennessee. That's the starting lineup. And hang on a second while I get the home team up on the board. Well, not wanting to work very well, but... We'll get those for you in just a second as I look at this. So get that off and throw this one up on the screen for you. For the Eagles, number three, Tim Cameron, a 6'4 senior guard out of Norcross, Georgia, starts. Number 11, Isaiah May, a 6'5 guard out, sophomore out of Belleville, Illinois. Jonathan Brown, a 6'3 sophomore guard from London, England. He's number 20. Fodi Kamara. A 6'6 forward, senior out of Queens, New York. And number 24, Thomas Sawulu, a 6'8 forward, freshman from London, England. Those are your starters for both sides. Get that cleared off. Get the scoreboard back up on the screen, and we'll be ready to go here in about 3 minutes and 46 seconds. Like I say, lots of action going on. Noon yesterday was women's basketball and men's soccer. And the men won one to nothing, one nil. Then today we had football action. Eagles win 21-19 over number seven, Baker. Volleyball wins in three straight matches in three straight sets. 
Hearts women's soccer team in quarterfinal action for the Heart going on right now down at Davis Field. Last report I got was uh, was still scoreless in the first half of play. And then we have the men getting ready to play here. Central College of the Bible, 1-1 one and one on the season. They are coached by Jack DeFratis. DeFratis. Assistant coach is Nick Stevens. For the Eagles, coached by Jeff Sherman. Assistant coaches, assistant head coach Matt Sherman, Trent Short, Brent Shuck, and Mark Muller. Both sides warming up as we anticipate the start here. Uh, look at my clock. It's 6.56. We've got two and a half minutes on the game scoreboard before we get started. We'll have PA announcer Gary Linhart give us a uh, sportsmanship PSA from the heart. And then prayer to start the game, national anthem, starting lineups, and we'll be ready to go. From Puckett Field House in Fayette. Central College of the Bible has got a couple of uh, Glasgow players on it. And a player from Salisbury. Antoine, Her Antoine Hereford. Hereford. 5'11 freshman guard from Glasgow. Adris Hamilton, a 5'10 junior guard from Glasgow. He starts. Jackson King, a 6'0 freshman forward out of Salisbury. A little more local flavor. Dominic O'Dell, 5'8 freshman out of Columbia, Missouri. And that's about it as far as the local, somewhere in, in the local area for the Saints. Officials are going to walk across the court. Horn should blow right about now. Didn't. So we should be about ready to go. Looking at the uh, walking wounded out at midcourt. Two players far central. Rain Hartman in the boot. He is done for the season. He blew out Torres Achilles in the second practice of the season. He's just had a rough go of it. He's from South Africa, Magliesburg, South Africa. Could not make it back last year because of COVID issues from South Africa to Fayette. So that last year was this COVID year for a senior year. So he comes back and tears a, an Achilles in the second practice of the year. The other player out there in shorts is Charlie Bronikowski. He has a uh, – he said it was somewhere between a – a, a, hairline fracture of his leg and a sprained ankle. So he's not in a boot or anything. So I'm going to say it's a sprained ankle. He should be ready to play in a couple of weeks. So they will give us the uh, PSA. Champions of character values, which are respect, integrity, responsibility, servant leadership, and sportsmanship. So we'll have the prayer. Here comes the prayer. We'll give you that. And then the national anthem. Almighty God, you have created us to strive for our best. Grant to all athletes, coaches, and fans the strength to pursue excellence during this event. We pray for the safety of these athletes. Protect them from injury and harm. Help us to honor you today in all we do on and off the court. And make us witnesses to your glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
And there's your national anthem. As we get set for the introduction of the players by the PA. And we'll let you hear from Paul Lennart. Central Christian College of the Bible. Starting in guard with a six foot nine inch junior number four, Rodrigo Nunez. At guard, a six foot senior number 12, Trey Black. At guard, a five foot 10 inch junior number 20, Davis Hamilton. At guard, a five foot 10 inch senior number 21, Cruz Mendoza. At a guard, a six foot three senior number 23, Andrew Johnson. Head coach of the Saints, Jack DeFreeman, Saints assistant by Nick Stevens. And now, let's meet the starters for your Central Methodist Eagles. At guard, a six foot four inch senior from North Ross, Georgia, number three, Tim Cameron. At forward, a six foot five inch sophomore from Belleville, Illinois, number 11, Isaiah May. At guard, a six foot three inch sophomore from London, England, number 20, Jonathan Brown. At forward, a six foot six inch senior from Queens, New York, number 23, Bodhi Kamara. Center, a six foot eight inch freshman from London, England, number 24, Thomas Sulu. The Eagle, are led by head coach Jeff Sherman. He is assisted by Matt Sherman, Trent Short, Fred Short, and Mark Muller. Alrighty, so there are your lineups, and we're just about set to get going. The Eagles will have a size advantage, except for the center position or the big forward. As Rodrigo Nunez comes in at 6'9", Big Thomas Wulu 6'8". Now see standing next to each other, there's not much difference. When I say there's two big men out on the court, I mean there are two big men out on the court. Ball's in the air and we're underway. And Central College of the Bible has the ball. The Saints. That was Cruz Mendoza. Andrew Johnson. Trey Black inside to Nunez. He muscles his way to the hoop. Can't get a shot to fall. Tipped around. And Isaiah May comes out with a rebound. Ahead to Jonathan Brown. Fody Kamara going to back up. Kick it out. And start all over with Tim Cameron who runs the show. Thomas Suwulu. His turn to go right at Nunez. Lays it up and in. Cruz Mendoza to the hoop. Occupied. Fade away jumper won't go. Brown with a rebound. Ahead in a hurry to May. Back out. Jonathan Brown. Fody Kamara. Ball fake to the hoop. Steps through. Banks it off the glass and good. Andrew Johnson with the basketball. And there's a foul called as Rodrigo Nunez puts up a jumper from the outside. Bump from behind. Jonathan Brown. First foul on Jonathan Brown. He is a sophomore from London, England. First free throw good. So it's Tim Cameron, 6'4 guard from Norcross, Georgia. Isaiah May. 6'5", guard, sophomore from Belleville, Illinois. Jonathan Brown from London, England. Fody Kamara from the Queens. And Thomas Suwulu from London. So 4-1. Second free throw was not any good. Suwulu spins. Can't find anybody. It's knocked away from him. Cruz Mendoza with the ball again. Rodrigo Nunez looks like he's most of the team as he goes inside. Now he hits a three from the outside. He's got all four points, and it's, we're tied at four. A foul. Trey Black, his first personal foul. Team foul number one. 
Reset the shot clock. Thomas Wulu. Cameron. Jonathan Brown squares up for a three. Halfway down and out. Isaiah May with a rebound. Puts it up. Fouled. And he'll go to the free throw line. I got a feeling after watching this, the uh, Eagles are going to attack number four, Rodrigo Nunez, who that's, this foul is on, and not have him stay in the game very long. Number 11, Isaiah May. May at the free throw line. Looking to get on the scoreboard. Front of the rim, back of the rim, and out. Thomas Wulu vacates his spot on the lane. And now Tim Cameron's going to come in and fill that spot as it looks like the Eagles are going to press, and Suwulu is the deep man in this setup. Second one goes, and here comes some pressure. Adris Hamilton had it. Mendoza across. Tim Cameron comes and takes the ball away. Kamara to the basket, won't go. Offensive foul on Fody Kamara. Mendoza, Black, back to Mendoza. Got Johnson at the midcourt line. That's him right there. They get it across. Cruz Mendoza from Alton, Texas. Trey Black. Almost lost his footing. May almost had a steal with Hamilton. Three from the corner on the way, no good. And there'll be a travel before that as Cruz Mendoza jumped in Tim Cameron's way. He tried to avoid him, but by doing so, he traveled. So Trey Black will bring the ball in from Choctaw, Oklahoma. Min Rodrigo Nunez had it. Trey Black, corner, step back three on the way, won't go. Battle for the rebound, Nunez gets it. Black again with it. Nunez covering up because he's on the floor, doesn't want to get stepped on. And there's Kamara with a steal. Being rid by John ridden by Johnson all the way down the floor. Tim Cameron, straight up three, wide open, no good, off the side of the rim. Black. Johnson went up for the layup, and Jonathan Brown blocked it. Tim Cameron to the hoop against Nunez. Knocked out of bounds. Nunez is lucky that wasn't foul number two on him already. Knocked out of bounds. Jonathan Brown to bring it in. That's Cameron outside with it. Drive down the lane. Deals it off to Sawulu on the baseline. Left-hand jumper good. Thomas Sawulu. He's got four. It's 7-4 in favor of the Eagles. Hamilton in the lane. Too hard. Cameron with a rebound. Tipped away. May's got it. Brown's got a three lined up. No good. Going to take a long rebound right back to him. He's going to take it down the lane, scoop it off the glass, and in. 9-4 in favor of the Eagles. Trey Black trying to break the press by himself. He does. Mendoza, Black. Johnson, Nunez. Straight up for a shot. No good. Brown with a rebound. Gets it off to Cameron. Tim Cameron to the hoop. Left hand off the glass. Good. 11-4. Got a couple subs getting ready to come in for the Saints. Mendoza. Black. Back to Mendoza. Mendoza with a three, doesn't get it to go. Cody Kamara with a rebound. Black steals it from Cameron. 
inside to Nunez. He's got a uh, height advantage there. Doesn't take use of it. Scoop shot doesn't go. Foul will be called, and that's on Fody Kamara, and that'll be two on him. So four minutes and 55 seconds into the game, and Kamara picks up two fouls, and so he will probably go to the bench right after this first free throw as there is a player at the bench for the Eagles now ready to come in. Three for the Saints. Cruz Mendoza, 5'10", senior guard. Misses the first one. Substitutions for the Eagles, number five, Dwayne McClendon. Dwayne McClendon checks in for the Eagles. Jackson King comes in. 22, Sam Adams. And 24, Jamari Larkin. Second free throw is good. We have timeout called. All by the Saints. I'd like to thank our corporate partners for their continued support of CMU Athletics, MFA Oil, the Braun Home, Jennings Premium Meats, Community Auto Sales and Service, Airlink, Drury Hotels, Missouri Pacific Lumber, Howard County Electric, and Commercial Trust Company. We'll be back for basketball action, uh, let's see, on Wednesday night when the women host Harris Stowe, 7 o'clock start here. That's our only game on the schedule next week, so tune in for that. We had a uh, 500-plus crowd for lunchtime basketball yesterday as the Lady Eagles tipped it at noon and defeated the Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats by the score of 86-55. So McClendon into the ball game. He will inbound it. We'll get used to the new Saints players on the floor in just a second. Tim Cameron going to bring the ball up. McClendon being the only change thus far. May, Brown, wants to shoot the three, going to drive instead. Kicks it out. Sawulu. Jackson King. Backed in. Nunez with a rebound. Trey Black out on the run. Lost the handle on it. Regains. This is Jamari Larkin with the ball. This is a 5'11 guard. Freshman. From Clarksville, Arkansas. And there's a turnover. Cameron's got it. To the hoop. To Sawulu. That's a bad idea in transit. But not set. And under too far underneath the basket anyway is Jamari Larkin. Swulu's first free throw, no good. Trent Lyle's going to check in. Isaiah May going to check out. Tice Lovinger checks in. Rodrigo Nunez checks out. Thomas Wulu, big Tom with the second one. Makes it 12-6. Scoreboard still says 11, but we'll see if that gets changed because I thought, I thought it was already 11. Black. Larkin. Inside. Couple of fakes. Nice move. Can't get it to roll for him. And Cameron comes out with the basketball. Trent Lyles to the hoop. Thomas Swulu lays it up and in. And now it's 14. They've got the other point up on the board. 14-5. Eagles stretch it out a little bit. Jackson King plays catch. That's Black with it. Loses the handle on it. Short baseline jumper. Rolls around no good. Thomas Swulu with the rebound. Jonathan Brown to the hoop, lays it up and in. He's got four. 16-5. Lobinger back out. Brown. Larkin. Larkin. 
Nice bounce pass, but it doesn't lead anywhere. It was Adams that did that. Shot goes up, no good. The shot clock goes off. Cameron on the run, shoves off, gets away with it. Brown has it now, wants to direct traffic. Still got 10 on the play, on the shot clock. Brown's going to take it to the hoop, steps through, tries to get it to Big Tom underneath, but it goes through his hands out of play. Jaden McGrew in, Cameron out, Kamara back in, Big Tom Sawulu out. So Brown and Kamara are the only starters that are on the floor right now. Kamara's already been out and back in. He's got two fouls, got to be kind of careful. And there's a foul out by midcourt, and that's on Brown, and that'll be his second personal foul. Nope, it's on Trent Lyles. That's his first. Fourteen foul. 12-16 to go. Jackson King from Salisbury to bring the ball in. They're intent on run to play. That is, they could have just thrown it in, but they get it to Larkin. Nunez. All the way across. King, three-pointer on the way, no good. Kamara with a rebound. Lyles. Kamara. Lyles. Three on the way. Side of the rim, no good. Nunez with the rebound to Larkin. 16-5. Quincy James into the game, had the ball. Inside it goes to Nunez. Can't get a roll to go in. And here comes Brown out on the run. A lot of movement there. And foul will be called. Kind of out of control. Jamari Larkin, it looks like, picks up the foul. His second personal foul. Team foul number three. Jonathan Brown. Leading scorer on the team last year. Makes the first one. 17-5. Misses the second one. That was Quincy James with the rebound. And that's Quincy James with the ball. Into the corner. Three on the way and good by Larkin. 24, Jamar, Jamari Larkin. And a timeout call by Central. As Coach Sherman doesn't like that. 17-8 is the score. Airlink Rural Broadband is your local wireless and fiber internet provider. Family owned and operated with coverage options in Sheraton, Howard, Saline, and surrounding counties. Interested in wireless or fiber service? Visit us at airlink123.com for info on all of your internet needs. So Eagles had a 12 point advantage just a moment ago, but Larkin hits a three. Knocks the lead down to nine. Eagles have used eight different players already. Jaden McGrew will run the show for now. He's got the basketball coming across midcourt. Trent Lyles right wing. Kamara sets a pick for him. Get Kamara gets it back. Squares up jumper over Nunez and good. Fodi Kamara, four points for him. Larkin. James with the basketball, going to go hoopward. Tries to pass it through too many big bodies. Knocked out. Here comes Brown on the run to Kamara. Can't get a shot to fall. Brown gets the rebound, going to pull it out and set it up. Kamara, ball fake, goes underneath the basket, lays it up and in. Fodi Kamara. Six points for the red shirt senior. 21-8. Larkin against McGrew. Kamara made him change his shot. Brown 
to McClendon, lays it up and in. Dwayne McClendon, his first two points of the game, and the lead gets to 15. As we're halfway through the first half of basketball. Larkin surveys. Finds King, back to Larkin. They're going big with Lawbinger in as well as Nunez. Nunez tries to tip it to Lawbinger, but it's knocked away from him. Brown on the run, slows it, gets it. Inside to McClendon against Lawbringer and lays it up and in. McClendon with four off the bench, 25-8. Nunez bumps Kamara, steps back, jumper on the way, comes up short. James with the rebound. Back out to King. Lyles on him, and a foul will be called. His second foul on Jonathan Brown, and we got uh, wholesale Everybody's changing sides. I think we got five new players. Johnson. And Sam Adams. All five new. Thomas Wulu back in. Adams kicks it back out. Three on the way is no good. That was Trey Black that missed it. McClendon down the lane. Little floater won't go. Back of the iron. And up on the run. Tipped away. And run down. McClendon diving on the floor, but has it go out of bounds off of him as the ball was tipped on a pass. And he went after it, but loses it out of bounds. Trey Black to bring the ball in bounds. Johnson tries to back in Sawulu. That's not very good. Trey Black, ball fake. Johnson, outside. Adams with a three. No good. McGrew with a rebound. Back. Sawulu in the lane. Clears a little space for himself. Can't get it to go, but tips it out. Lyles with it. As the play clock operator reset to 30 when he should have reset to 20. So there's 18 on the shot clock. McGrew's got it. Eight minutes to go in this first half of play. Lyles. Zone defense by the Saints. Lyles going to take it to the hoop. And there will be an offensive foul on Trent Lyles. And that's his second personal foul. Sixth team foul, so the next foul on Central will put the Saints on the free throw line. 25-8. Mendoza, Black, lose the handle on it momentarily. Almost over and back. Johnson, Adams, thought about it. Mendoza. Down the lane, left-hander off the glass, no good. Sawulu with a rebound to Lyles. He's got two fouls, got to be careful driving in there. McClendon in the corner, three on the way and good. Dwayne McClendon with seven off the bench. Stretches it out to a 20-point lead. Jackson Andrews getting ready to check in at the next dead ball. Cruz Mendoza. Black. Adams with the miss. McGrew with the rebound. McClendon sees the way to the basket. And we're going to have an offensive foul on Dwayne McClendon. 
his first seventh team foul in the contest for the Eagles, number zero, Jackson Andrew. Cruz Mendoza with the basketball, walking it up across half court. Jackson Andrews into the ball game, guarding him. Trey Black looking for someone to pass to, finds a way to the lane, to the basket, lays it up just a bit too hard as it rolls out on him. Andrews on the run the other way. McGrew, Andrews. McClendon with the, from the corner where he just hit one. Thomas Sawulu with all of that size goes airborne and tries to save it to no avail. Tried to save it, but that's a lot of beef to get up off the ground. He uh, is listed at 245 pounds. Johnson, no good. Black runs it down in the corner, gets it back to Johnson. Swulu upsets his shot a little bit. McClendon, McGrew. Down the lane, little roller that goes in. Jaden McGrew, his first two of the game, 30-8. to eight. Been a long drought for the Saints. They've been stuck on eight a long time. Trey Black switches and gets the big guy on him. Johnson, three on the way, won't go. McGrew in a hurry. Andrew spots up for a three and nails it. Jackson Andrews, 33-8, and the lead swells, and a timeout called by Central College of the Bible. Central Christian College of the Bible. CCB on your scoreboard, 33-8. We'll let you watch the dancers during this break. leading squad from Central Methodist entertaining the crowd and it's a nice crowd with all the things that are going on being split up with soccer game going on down at Davis Field and that's a conference quarterfinal men play in semifinal on Tuesday if the women win tonight they play in semifinal action on Wednesday then the men's championship is Friday evening and the women's championship is Saturday evening. So looking out, it's Cruz, Larkin, Hamilton, Nunez, and Adams on the floor for the Saints. This is Hamilton, Glasgow boy, so nearby, knows this court very well. Larkin fires a there's a three that was taken uh, real quickly because I think he thought the shot clock was running out it's not May with a jumper and hits it really hard to get a shot off on one end on the other end a clean jumper Nunez after making a, a free throw and a three to start out with been pretty quiet since then he's got four points and those all came in the first couple of trips down the floor Mendoza inside to Nunez. Flyers, some big bodies going to bump into one another. Off the glass, no good. Andrews with a rebound. Just hit a three, looking for somebody. Finds May. Cameron down the lane. And he's held on the way there. That could be Nunez. If it is, that's two on him. He's the closest to it, but it's not him. It's on Adris 
Hamilton. Substitution for the Saints. Number two, Quincy James. Number five, Jackson King. Quincy James and Jackson King back into the lineup. That's team foul number five on the Saints. Pass to May, tipped away, but he ends up getting it back. Dribbles it off of a foot, and that is off of the foot of Quincy James. Thirteen on the shot clock. Sawulu, Cameron underneath. May, backdoor cut, lays it up off the glass. 37 to 8. At one point, it was 17 to 8. So it's a 20 to nothing run by the Eagles. Nunez looks to stop that. Misses. Sawulu with a rebound. Cameron on the run. Loses the ball, gets it back. Things are slippery. Here's King with it, loses the handle on it. Shot blocked, but a foul will be called on. Fans don't like it. Foul will be on Michael Perez. He is a 6'5 freshman from Madrid, Spain. So that ends the 20 to nothing drought with the first free throw going in. First point. For Quincy James, second one rattles around and good. Somebody yells brick, but it was pretty quick. It was pretty nice touch as it crawled right in. Cameron, and there's a foul in the backcourt, and that will go against Hamilton. That's his second personal foul. Both sides will be in the bonus from here on out after the next Saints foul. Cameron to the hoop. It's on the floor, and it's an offensive foul on Tim Cameron. His first personal foul. James to bring the ball up the floor. A lot of reaching in the ball game. Nunez inside, looks for a cutter. That's King outside for a three. Jackson King for three. And a 6-0 run for the Saints. Michael Perez crawls in his first two of this ball game. 39-13. King, who just hit a three, tries another one, misses. Cameron, double teamed. Gets the ball to Andrews. Gets it across half court. Back to Cameron. The pressure and the bumping has bothered him. He lines up a three and hits it. Didn't bother him too much when he got a little open space. He's got five in the game. The lead's 29. There's a hope that was almost answered as Hamilton threw it up. Over the bigs and almost got it to go. Would have been a circus shot. Jackson Andrews off the glass. No good from deep. Larkin on the run. Can't get it to go, but he's ridden all the way down the floor by Jackson Andrews. 6'3", sophomore guard out of St. Louis. That'll be his first. Saints, Jamari Larkin. Jamari Larkin. He's got three in the game. Thomas Wulu, being from England, tries to uh, play football, soccer as we call it with it, and didn't work out too well. Larkin's second free throw with 154 left to go. Crawls in. He's got four in the game. Say hi to the Sherman family out in Colorado. Watching son and grandson. Out of bounds. A little out of control was Perez as he tried to hit Sawulu inside. 1.42 to go. Yeah. 
Larkin. King. James to the hoop. Too hard. Nunez had a hand on it, but can't keep it. Perez almost loses it. May. There's a bump, and that'll go on Quincy James, I believe. May with five points in the ball game. Short but crawls in, front of the rim, back of the rim, and in. Second one rattles around but falls. 44 14. Nunez. At 6'9", no weight, but clearly 245, 250-ish. 10 on the shot clock. Nunez again. Has it slapped away from him by Cameron. Two on two, two on three. Cameron to the hoop, lays it up and in. Seven points for Tim Cameron. Under 40 to go here in the first half. Bump. Miss. Sawulu had it. Goes off of him out of bounds with 23. Shot clock off. Game clock 23.1. Nunez with the basketball. Hamilton underneath the basket. I was going to say almost nowhere to go, but he banks it up and in. He's got two. And lost ball on one end, and King puts up a shot at the buzzer that would not have counted has it, had it gone. 46-16 is our halftime score. Well, I'll have stats for you and information in just a moment. So we'll take a, about a one-minute break, and when we come back, you'll get to hear the dulcet tones of Quentin Norris giving you what's going on at Central on the uh, weekend and this weekend and around the, the campus this week. So we're going to take about a one-minute break, and when we come back, you'll hear Quentin. So come right back right after this. We're back here at Puckett Fieldhouse on the campus of Central Methodist University. Central Methodist men leading Central Christian of the Bible, 46 to 16. There, Quentin Norris in the catbird seat as well. Central Methodist getting off to a great start as well. If you look at the numbers there, Central Christian of the Bible, they shot 11 percent from the field, four out of 35. 
three out of 15 from the three-point line, 20% and five out of eight from the free-throw line, 63%. And then leading the way for Central Christian about four points apiece from Rodrigo Nunez. And then number 24, Jamari Larkin. For Central Methodist, 19 to 30 from the field, 63%. Three out of nine from the three-point line, 33%. Five out of eight from the free-throw line, 63%. Got four players leading the way with seven points apiece. You got Tim Cameron. Also, number five, Dwayne McClendon. Also, Isaiah May. And, of course, Thomas Sawonu with seven points. It's all 46-16 is the score. Hey, it's been a fun weekend here at Central Methodist. First start off at high noon yesterday with the Central Methodist women's basketball team. A thrilling 86-55 victory over Indiana Wesleyan. A team that went to the Final Four. They were ranked number 11 in the polls. They were a thrilling, exciting victory that led from really start from finish. I think the only except for the first 12 seconds of the match, Indiana Wesleyan led 2 0, and then it was 25 15, then 44 26, then 62 to 40, and then the 86 55 victory to Ashley. McElroy led the way with 22 points. Well, she has really become a great player there. If you remember Wednesday night against Ottawa, she scored 21 points as well. And then, of course, that afternoon, the men's soccer team, they defeated Baker 1-0 in the Hartmarket Conference quarterfinals. They'll be playing Tuesday night at home, 4 o'clock kickoff against Grandview. The other semifinals... It'll be Missouri Valley and Mount Mercy. Mount Mercy, the 60, upset the third seeded Mid American Nazarene, one to nothing in overtime as well. It was a throwing game down in, <coughs> excuse me here, in Olathe, Kansas. And of course, today, a fun day there. How about the Central Methodist football team? What an amazing victory 21 19 victory over Baker. Exciting game there. Baker led 6 0. Central Method is like 7-6 at halftime on that touchdown pass from Paxton De Laurent. Is that how you pronounce his last name? De Laurent. De Laurent from Camden, Missouri. They made it 7-6. Central Method is led 14-12 after three. And then a 21-19 victory to Clint Lee's the share of the Hard America Conference South. They are now 8-2, and 4-0 there. And most likely could, could head to the playoffs as well. But we'll have to wait and see in about a week or so. And De La Laurent had a great game. I think all together, I think about 275 yards passing. And then, but it was a total team effort against a Baker team that was ranked number seven in the polls there. And then, of course, at four o'clock, of course, I had the opportunity to broadcast the volleyball match between Central Methodist and William Penn. Central Methodist won out 25 23, 25 12, 25 18 there as well, 27 6. They'll be headed to Des Moines, Iowa on Tuesday to take on Grandview. <coughs> Grandview. Kick tip off is at 7 p.m. down at Des Moines, Iowa. They've won the last three meetings, including the 2019 National Conference title game. And also they defeated Grandview three sets October the 7th here as well. So this is an opportunity to get into the national tournament. They're ranked number 13 in the polls. Women's soccer, I think, last I heard, it was 0-0 in the second half between Central Methodist and Clark. And pretty much if Central Methodist win, they'll play at 6 p.m. on the, the 10th against either Culver Stockton or Baker. That should be a fun one there as well. Next game up for the Central Methodist men. Tuesday night, they'll be headed to Kansas City to take on Avila. That's a 7 o'clock start time as well. Then the 12th, I think they go to Springfield, take on Arkansas Baptist, and then then they'll remain in Arkansas, then Springfield. Next Saturday, taking on College of the Ozarks, 5.30 start time. Central Methodist women, then they'll be hosting Kansas Wesley at 2 o'clock start time as well. Should be a fun ball game there as well. Kansas Wesley, a, a fine ball club. A, they're a well-coached team, and you can... They have some good ball players there. So it should be a great test for the Central Methodist women. Next home game for the men. A week from Monday, taking on University of Health Science and Pharmacy. That's a 7.30 start time as well. 
pregame show about 7.15, you might say, as well. So things are going great over at Central Methodist. And, hey, you know, this is the fun time of year. You got the sports season getting started as well. The winter sports season, fall season's winding down. And then actually with 20.53 to go, Central Methodist is leading Clark 2 to nothing now. So things are looking great there as well. So right now, it's Central Methodist 46 and Clark 16 here at Puckett Fieldhouse. All right, so that's what's going on at Central Methodist these days, according to Quentin Norris. We've got some halftime stats and some info for you. So we'll throw that stuff up on the screen so you can see it, and you'll see why the game is the w it is the way it is. Halftime stats, field goal percentage, the Saints shooting 11.4 percent. They are four of 35 from the field. Eagles, on the other hand, are 19 of 30. Shooting 63.3%. Free throw line. Central Christian College, 5 of 8. So is Central, both shooting 62.5%. Three-point shooting, 3 of 15 for Central Christian for 20%. 3 of 9 for 33% for Central. Rebounding. The Saints have 10 total rebounds. The Eagles have 34. Offensive rebounds, four for the Saints, six for the Eagles. Turnovers, uh, Saints doing better there. They only have six turnovers. The Eagles, on the other hand, have turned it over 13 times. We will leave those up for you to stew on for just a second so you can see exactly why the score is 46-16 for the Saints. They are led by Jamari Larkin and Rodrigo Nunez with four apiece. Three points for Jackson King. Two points for Quincy James. Two points for Adris Hamilton. One point for Cruz Mendoza. That's their 16. For the Eagles, they have balanced scoring that goes like this. Thomas Sawulu with seven. Tim Cameron with seven. Isaiah May with seven. Dwayne McClendon with seven. Six points for Fodi Kamara. Five points for Jonathan Brown, three points Jackson Andrews, and two points apiece for Michael Perez and Jaden McGrew. Total fouls in the first half, seven for the Saints as uh, Jamari Larkins got two and Adris Hamilton has two fouls as well. The only players on that side with two. On the Central Methodist side, Cody Kamara's got two, Jonathan Brown's got two, and Trent Lyles with two. So nobody with more than two fouls in the ball game thus far. So at one point in time, it was 17 to eight. So if you go from that, the Eagles outscored the Saints 29-8 from that point forward. Both sides are back out. We'll get those stats off the screen so you don't have to look at them anymore. We'll get the scoreboard put back up. So you see exactly what's going on as we are at halftime. Got 350 left in our halftime. Want to make sure we get everybody thanked that we need to thank our corporate partners for their continued support of CMU Athletics, MFA Oil, The Braun Home, Jennings Premium Meats, Community Auto Sales and Service, Airlink, Drury Hotels, Missouri Pacific Lumber, Howard County Electric, and Commercial Trust Company. Those folks make these broadcasts possible. Make it possible for me to drive in. Hour and 35 minutes to get here from my home in Warrensburg, Missouri. Glad to do it. I did the football game earlier today. Exciting football game where the 
Eagles defeated the number seven team in the nation, Baker Wildcats, 21 to 19. Baker missed their first extra point. It was a kick and it was low and blocked. Made it six to nothing. Then the Eagles ran off, got up 14-6, and then. The Baker scored again to make it 14-12. Went for two to try and tie the game. Did not succeed, so it stayed 14-12. And then Eagles scored, and scored a touchdown to make it 21-12. And then... Baker scored a touchdown and made a successful extra point to make a 21-19, and that's where it stayed. Central got the ball back, got a couple of first downs behind some nice running by Aldridge, their running back, who came in and picked up yardage for a couple of first downs. They extended all of the Baker's timeouts, another first down, and they were able to take a knee twice and finish the game off with a 20-19 victory, 21-19 victory. One of the biggest wins in recent years, and it also puts the Eagles in first place in the Southern Division of the Heart of America Conference as they are 4-0 in that. Baker now 3-1. Eagles go on the road to play Evangel next week, and they will have at least a share of that Southern Division. If they were to lose, they'll end, they could end up tied, but they've got the head-to-head tiebreaker as they have defeated Baker. If they defeat Evangel, they would be 8-2 and two on the season, or 9-2 and two on the season, rather, and get an automatic berth by winning the division to the next round of playoffs. So exciting times at Central F- for football. Jim Ray Cluck does the ball games with me and says it was 1975 the last time the Eagles won a conference title of any kind in football. That banner hangs up in here because I was here when that happened in 1975. I've got a banner hanging up in here for a baseball championship in 1975. I was part of that team. I was an eighth grader. No, I'm lying. I was a freshman. So got long ties to the school. Two of my kids went to school here. So my wife graduated from here as well. So we're just about set to go as the clock runs down. Once it gets to zero, let's see if they put the second period up on the clock. Looks like it'll be central basketball. Put 20 up on the clock. Brown, Kamara, May, Suwulu, and Cameron, the original starters. Cameron with it. Stolen ahead of the pack. Not going to get it to the hoop against all those big people, but put back. Rebound by Trey Black. He's fouled as he puts the shot up. Bodie Kamara picks up his third foul. He just can't buy a break. How many minutes did Fody Kamara play? He played eight minutes in the first quarter. Eight minutes and 25 seconds picking up fouls. Picks up his third here. Trey Black misses the first one. Gets the second one to go. Cameron, Sawulu, spin move, go to the right hand, off the glass and in. Nine points. He's the leading scorer now for the Eagles. Brown with a steal, but it goes out of bounds. 
Nice anticipation by Jonathan Brown. Hope his family and Thomas Awulu's family over in London, England are watching. Welcome you to the broadcast. Hope you enjoy seeing the boys play, the lads. And a pass goes out of bounds, but it's tipped. It'll stay with the Saints. It was a tip out of bounds, so the shot clock does not reset, so they took it back to 16. And they're telling the heavyweights inside Nunez and Suulu to cut out all the uh, pushing and shoving. And we're going to have more talk as they now think that there's a wet spot on the floor. A convocation of Eagles clean it up with their sneakers. Learned that from Jim Ray Cluck as well. Nunez, spin baseline, bank shot off the glass, no good, a little bit hard. Brown with a rebound, Kamara all the way across to Cameron, almost lost it out of bounds, squares up, fires a three, doesn't go, tipped by Kamara, won't go, and it goes out of bounds off of Fody Kamara. He was inside battling for a rebound, didn't get it. Johnson in the corner, trying to get it into Nunez. Black has it behind the line. Three-pointer no good. And a travel on the rebound as Cruz Mendoza, nope, as Jamari Larkin had the ball and lost control of it. So Tim Cameron. Brown, straight up three. Good. Jonathan Brown with eight now. Mendoza. Larkin. Off the glass and a little bit short. Sawulu, Brown, Kamara underneath, scoop shot, gets his own rebound, puts it up, no good, foul called. Foul is on Andrew Johnson, his first personal foul, first team foul, second half. Free throw is short. No free throws attempted in the first half, so that's the first one. 0 for 1. Makes the second one. Mendoza tries to take to the basket. It's blocked by Sawulu. Brown is an alley-oop. Can't get it to go, but Kamara cleans up the rebound. Nine for Kamara. Trey Black looks for some room. Lesser of two evils, almost has it picked away, knocked away. Johnson gets it back, runner in the lane, no good. Sawulu with a rebound, Cameron with it. And Johnson runs into Sawulu's pick, doesn't much care for it. He ran into a wall, foul on the other end. Aaron Douglas into the game. Nope, they're going to call it number 12, Trey Black. They're going to change it. 
because uh, Aaron Douglas is not in the lineup. Cameron's first free throw is good. He's got eight. Quincy James back in. Sam Adams back in. Tip no good. Our second shot no good. Sawulu with the rebound. Left hand shot doesn't go. Black on the run. Has a shot blocked by Brown. Black blocked by Brown. Cameron to the hoop. Lays it up. Doesn't get it to go. Nunez fouls him. That's his third personal foul. Nope. They've only got it. This will be his second personal foul. I was sure he picked up two in the first half, but I obviously was mistaken. Halftime he had one, so that's his second personal foul. Tim Cameron at the line. Side of the rim, no good. Got the ball from the official, wanted to shoot it to see if it would go through the basket. Official says no thank you. Tice Lobinger, freshman out of Park Hills. He is 6'10", the program says. He's also listed as a guard at 6'10". Obviously not true. Both free throws missed by Cameron. Black with the ball. Almost loses it. Now he's stuck. Gets it to Mendoza. Back to Black. He wants to think about a shot. Of three from there. Drives instead. Adams. Almost travels. Lobinger. But a foul inside on Sawulu, I believe. A reaching foul. That's his first personal foul. Team foul number two. Black looks for a cutter back out to Cruz Mendoza. Squares up a three. Can't get at the shot to fall. May with a rebound. And Jaden McGrew just into the ball game. Has the ball in his hands. May. Elbow jumper from the free throw line. Good. May with nine in the game. Three players on the floor with nine and one with eight. And we're going to see Brandon Cook check in here in just a second. Adams with a miss. McGrew with the rebound. 55-17. Brown. Kamara. Can't get his back. Just a little bit too hard. It bounced off. And Trey Black. Mendoza. Th- jumper on the way and good. Cruz Mendoza. 57-19 with... 15.22 to go. Kamara inside. Sawulu up and in. First player in double figures with 11 for the Eagles. Adams with a three on the way and hits it. Caught it in rhythm. His first points of the game. He's got those three. Sawulu again. A lot of beef against a little bit of size and an offensive foul called on Big Tom. A little bit too much backing in and a little bit of acting by Lobinger, but that's all right. That's the way the game is played. Brandon Cook in and a timeout called by the Eagles. Airlink Rural Broadband is your local wireless and fiber internet provider, family owned and operated with coverage options in Sheraton, Howard, Saline, and surrounding counties. Interested in wireless or fiber service? Visit us at airlink123.com for all your internet needs. So, May, Brown, Cook, McGrew, and Dwayne McClendon in the game for the Eagles. McClendon came off the bench and picked up seven points, I believe, in that first half. In a little over nine and a half minutes of play. 
King. James. Going to get it across half court. No pressure that up to that point. Cruz Mendoza back to James. Got May on him. Down to the floor. He slides. No play, no call. And another three-pointer from Sam Adams. Back to back. He's got six back-to-back -back threes. 59-25. McClendon. McGrew. Brown. Into the lane. Pulls up. Jumper on the way halfway down, but scoops out. King had it. Lobinger ends up with it. Cruz. Adams. Got another three lined up. He's hit two in a row. Doesn't get that one to go. King with the long rebound. No good. Cook with a rebound. Brown spins away from the contact, and there will be a foul, and I think it's going to be a blocking foul on Sam Adams. It's his first. Free throw line goes Jonathan Brown. Misses. Exactly 14 minutes to go in this ball game. 59, 25. Misses both free throws. Lobinger with a rebound. James loses his footing. The ball ends up on his head. Brown to the hoop, lays it up and in, and we've got an injury timeout. As Quincy James is down on the floor, the ball ended up on his head. I don't know if he got... Stepped on, need. But he says he's okay. Sixty-one twenty-five. Brown with ten now. He's in double figures. Two players in double figures. Men's next home game is on the fifteenth against St. Louis College of Pharmacy, which I think has a new name or a different name these days, but that's who it is. Lobinger gets the shot to go, little jumper. Tice Lobinger, his first two points of the game. Brown sizing up Lobinger, pulls up three on the way, no good. Cook had his hands on it, but he's battling two Saints for it. Mendoza comes out with it. King from the corner. No good, but a foul will be called as Jackson King fires it from the corner of three. He'll go to the free throw line and shoot three free throws. Foul on Isaiah May. First one is short. He's got three points in the ball game. a three-pointer. Trent Lyles ready to check back in, as is Jamari Larkin. Second one is no good as well. Everybody's moving around as Cook and Lobinger thought that was the uh, last of the shots. Cruz Mendoza checks out for the Saints. So Jackson King, 0 for 2, has his third free throw. Hits that one. 61-28, four points for King. Brown. Oh, they had McClendon on a back cut lob, but didn't get it. Lyles. Doesn't draw iron, just backboard. Here comes James to the hoop on the run, a little bit out of control. And we just race up and down the floor. McGrew to Cook, no good. Lyles with a rebound. Brown going to take it down. Lyles kicks it off. McClendon's got a three lined up. Comes up short. Lyles runs it down in the corner. Goes baseline underneath. Can't get it to go. Cook can't get it to go. Tipped up, and we'll see if it goes Brown. McClendon gets credit for it. 63-28. Clemens. 
Clinton with nine in the ball game now. Kicked out. Lobinger from the baseline. No good. McClendon stays in bounds. Gets it ahead to Brown. This is how all the turnovers happened in the first half, and they continue to do that as Brown thinks the ball was knocked out of bounds by one of the Saints players, and the official begs to differ. Jackson King. Trent Lyles on him. They may have seen each other in high school. Salisbury High School and Sacred Heart out of Sedalia. Sam Adams around the corner lays it up and in. He's got eight points, all of them here in the second half, all of them in about the last three minutes of play. McGrew, Cook underneath, loses the handle on it, but gets it back, puts it up and in. Brandon Cook, his first two points of the night. Six, seven, sophomore from Evening Shade, Arkansas. I like Evening Shade. King, corner, Lobinger. Adams, back into Lobinger. He's got four-inch or so, three-inch height advantage, but foul on Cook on the way. Lobinger at 6'10". Cook at 6'7", so a three-inch height differential. We get three new players coming in. Aaron Douglas, Gerson Ramos, and Adris Hamilton checks back in. So this is the first appearance for Douglas and for Ramos. Ramos from Mission, Texas. Douglas from Smithton, Missouri. That was him with the ball right there. This is Ramos. Lots of cutting to the hoop. No charge, and the ball goes out of bounds off of Ramos's hands. And Michael Perez gets ready to check back in. Brandon Cook will check out. Perez, 6'5", freshman guard from Madrid, Spain. All the way down the floor is McClendon with nobody guarding him, but a nice job by Aaron Douglas to knock it out of bounds. Take away the sure dunk. Lyles calls out the play. Play is get the ball to Perez. He's got it. Lyles. McGrew going to split the defense, go down the lane. He's a lefty, can't get it to go. Perez, or McClendon with the tip, no good, but Jaden McGrew gets the third shot to go. 67-30. Four points for McGrew. Black rises up for a shot, can't get it to go. McClendon with a rebound. It's a track meet with Brown. McClendon's got a three from straight away. No good. Tipped around. And Trent Lyles is going to pick up foul number three going over the top trying to get to the ball. That's foul number, team foul number four. His third personal foul. And we've got a timeout. 67-20, 9.44 to go. Again, not much on our schedule Basketball-wise for next week, on Wednesday night, the women will be here to take on Harris Stowe at 7 o'clock. Got other things going on with soccer. The men will play next Tuesday in semifinal action. The women, if they hang on, they were up 2-0. The women's soccer team, if they win, they will play on Wednesday night. Football team on the road Saturday in Springfield taking on the Evangel Valor. Yep, used to be the Crusaders. They've decided to switch their name up, and now they are Valor. And as my buddy Michael Moana was commenting on the way home from a ball game last night, they used to be the Crusaders, a knight on a horse. Now they're Valor, and they just got rid of the knight, and now it's just the horse. And that's very true because that's now their their picture mascot is a horse.
And I have a daughter that graduated from Evangel as well. So we're back to action, 944. 37-point lead. Douglas to bring it in. Gives it to Larkin. Against Lyles. Almost lose the ball. Lyles almost picks up foul number four, reaching. Douglas. Ramos with a three. Hits it. Gerson Ramos. Lyles. Across. Perez. McGrew. Brown. Perez back to Brown. Looking for an opening to get to the hoop. Inside it goes to McClendon. Tied up. Turns around. Puts it up and in. Dwayne McClendon. He's got 11. That's three players in double figures for the Eagles. Stretch it out. 69-33. Ramos. McGrew on him. Hamilton loses it. It goes out of bounds. It'll stay there. They got 30 on the shot clock, and they're going to correct that to 20. Larkin cut to the basket and was unhappy that he didn't get the ball. He's got it now. Jonathan Brown called for the foul. That's his third personal foul. Ramos to the hoop. Scoop shot, hits the underneath the side of the basket. But McClendon with the foul. That's his second. And we'll have bonus free throws from here on out for the Saints as that's team foul number seven. Gerson Ramos, three points in the ball game, hit a three-pointer just about a minute or so ago, hits the first free throw. Ramos is a 5'9 sophomore from Mission, Texas. Footy Kamara in. Dwayne McClendon out. Free throw is good. Back and forth, all the way down the floor. Kamara all alone, lays it up and in as somebody blew an assignment. Kamara with 11 now, so four players in the ball game in double figures for the Eagles. 71-35, King, Ramos, Larkin, Douglas straight up three, a little hard, Brown with a rebound, Ramos reaches in trying to get it, foul on him. His first personal foul, team foul number five, so no free throws for the Eagles yet. Cody Kamara stand over by the bench all by himself. They don't see it. Now they do. Lyles asks everybody to get out of the way, and he runs it up against Ramos. Brown in the corner. Ball fake right to the hoop. Left hand slam. Left hand slam from Jonathan Brown. He had a dunk in the last ball game. 73-35. Ramos down the lane, not afraid, takes it to the hoop and scores. He's got seven off the bench in about two and a half minutes of play. Here comes McGrew to Kamara. He dunks as well. Back-to-back flushes for the Eagles. And a timeout called or a foul called? Timeout call by the Saints, 75-37, 7.02 to go. Soccer game must be close to being over. Quentin Norris next to me says he'll check the score, but I see people coming in all bundled up, so I'm guessing they were down at the soccer game and then decided to come up and watch the end of this after that was over. Electric 
the students and all have to decide which event they want to go see, and the, the cheerleaders have to, to split up as well. That's why we've only got part of the cheerleading squad here because some of them are down at the soccer event. Some were at volleyball earlier today. Some were at the football game today. So I talk about the doing two ball games in today broadcasting the cheerleaders some of them have done three or four events today so i really don't have much to talk about gotta say i like the music selection is that a final yeah Three to nothing, the Lady Eagles defeat Clark, which is exactly what they beat them by about a week and a half ago in league play was three to nothing. So the ladies will advance and play next Wednesday in semifinal action. Quincy James back into the lineup. Andrew Johnson, that's James with the basketball right there. That's Johnson with it. Trey Black. Jamari Larkin stolen by Kamara. Blake Fowler into the game. Misses a shot. Larkin with the rebound. So it's Lyles, Larkin, or Lyles, Fowler. Nunez misses the chippy. This is Michael Perez with the ball. Fodi Kamara. Tries to go behind his back. Little fancy. Loses it. Throws it ahead. Larkin. Trey Black fakes a three. Wants to go down the lane. Too many big bodies there. Jump out. Johnson. Nunez. James steps inside the three-point line and misses. Cody Kamara with the rebound. Slow it down a little bit with six minutes to go in the ball game. Mar against Nunez to the hoop, lays it up and in. Against Rodrigo Nunez at 6-9. Kamara gets it to go. He's got 15 in the game now. Kicks it back out, does black. He's saying, I thought you were going to go this way, but it goes to the bask to the bench instead. Gersten. Gerson Ramos back in. Sam Adams back in. Jackson Andrews back in. So Blake Fowler, Jackson Andrews, Fodi Kamara, Trent Lyles, and Jonathan Brown on the floor. That's Kamara with it. He's sizing up Nunez, who's plenty big and fumbles the ball away. Ramos with it. Johnson. As everybody tries to get inside, Ramos, or Nunez, does not want to get inside. He fires the jump shot from the top of the key and doesn't get it. And we head back the other way. Lyles, Fowler in the corner. Fowler was going to further in the corner, and Lyles threw it right behind where he was. Out of bounds. Saints basketball, Ramos with it. May getting ready to check back in for the Eagles. Nunez drops it off behind him to James. Johnson, top of the key, looks inside. Nunez has it against Kamara. Bump, fade back. Jumper comes up short. And Fodi Kamara with a rebound. Nunez tries to take it away from him and misses. Jackson Andrews with a three over the top of the backboard and out of play. May will come back in. Twelve different players have been on the floor for the Eagles in the game tonight. Just about everybody who's healthy has been in the game. Ramos off of Fowler's leg and out of bounds. 4.17 to go. Adams, Nunez way underneath, misses the first, misses the second, gets another rebound, and he's fouled on the way up. 
And that's Kamara, and that'll be his fourth personal foul. So he will probably be checking out very soon. Unless Coach Sherman wants to see if he can finish the game without fouling out. For Rodrigo Nunez. Four points, and he got them all in about the first minute and a half of this game. One free throw and a three-pointer. Now he's got five in the game. And he has, he played quite a bit. First half, he played 14 of the 20 minutes. Gets both of those. May to get it in. Blake Fowler with the basketball. Ramos almost picks his pocket. A couple of times behind his back. Kamara to the hoop. Kicks it out. Jackson Andrews corner three does not go. Jonathan Brown is fouled on the putback. He'll go to the line. Shoot a pair. Andrew Johnson. At the line, shooting two, Jonathan Brown. Scoreboard says that Johnson's fourth personal foul in one place. In another place, it says it's his second foul, and it's his second. If Jonathan Brown needs to work on much of anything, he's got a few turnovers tonight, and his free throw shooting has not been very good. Brown with 12 points in the game. Make it 13. Getting to contest for the Eagles, number 13, Kirby Burberty. Kirby Faverty into the ball game. So the bench is being emptied, as well it should be, with a 40-point lead and 3.45 to go. Ramos against Fowler. Ramos has been pretty fearless so far. Johnson three from the corner, good. Three points, Andrew Johnson. Missed jumper by Jackson Andrews. Fowler gets it back, steps inside the three-point line and hits. Blake Fowler, freshman guard, 5'11", out of Campbell, Missouri. And we'll have a quick timeout. Central College, or Central Christian, doesn't look like they want to firm up and have a uh, huddle or not. We want to thank the corporate partners for their support of CMU Athletics, MFA Oil, the Braun Home, Jennings Premium Meats, Community Auto Sales and Service, Air Link, Drury Hotels, Missouri Pacific Lumber, Howard County Electric, and Commercial Trust Company. 82-40, to go. Eagles on top early and have pushed the lead out. Looks like they'll go to 2-0 on the season. Central Christian College will go to 1-2 on the season. down to the last three plus minutes of this ball game. May, Andrews, Fowler. Faberty and McClendon on the floor. Ramos, Larkin, Antoine Hereford on the floor. Laubinger with the ball. Ramos. Adams. Three on the way. He's got it. He's been uh, the star of the second half for them. He didn't have any points in the first half. He's got 11 now. Fowler against Ramos. Ramos trying to reach and pick. Andrews. Faberty. McClendon. May. Running the offense. Jackson Andrews with a three, rolls in. Eagle three, Jackson Andrews. He's got six in the ball game, pair of threes. Adams, 
Lovinger back to Adams down the lane, kicks it out. And we'll have a foul call. I think that's going to be on Fowler on the pass off, but it doesn't make any difference. It'll be a one and one for Sam Adams. 6-1 sophomore from St. Charles, Missouri. Makes the first one. He's got 12 of the team's 46. Second free throw. Also good. Substitution for the Saints, number 11, Aaron Douglas. Aaron Douglas checks in. And Adams checks out with his 13. Douglas, a 6-3 freshman from Smithton, Missouri. Fowler, call for a double dribble. They're going to talk about it, as whether it was slapped or not. It is double dribble, and we will continue on. Trent Lyles coming back in. Brandon Cook coming back in. Jackson Andrews and Isaiah May check out for the Eagles. Larkin. Ramos. Douglas. Back to Larkin. Lobinger spins. Jumper, no good. Tipped around. Lyles with it. He's got a man open. That would be Fowler down the floor. Takes it down and lays it up and in. He's got four in the ball game. 85-47, 139 and counting. Ramos baseline underneath the basket. Moore, or Douglas. Herringer with a three. Glasgow boy wants to do good close to home. Misses the shot. To the hoop. McClendon, and he's hurt. Makes the basket. He's fouled, and he's down holding a leg. Gingerly getting up with the help of couple of different players, including Jamari Larkin. And Juan Herford with the foul, and he's limping around, so maybe they uh, bump knees. McClendon to the free throw line eventually. He's going to take a break. Coach Sherman asks if he wants to stay in. He can substitute for him if he'd like. McClendon says he's all right, stays in. Free throw scoops out. And a foul. Nope, a travel instead. McClendon with 13. He'll come out, I believe. Michael Perez checks in, so McClendon at 6'5", checks out. Perez at 6'5", checks in. Cook, Fowler, Lyles, three, back of the rim, no good. Favorite, battles, jump ball with Douglas, goes over to Central Christian. Michael Moana joins us back from the soccer game. 3-0 Lady Eagles. He says yes, so they continue on. He produced the football game today. Helped out with producing the soccer game as well. Ramos. Larkin. To the hoop, not afraid in the least. Cook inside to Fowler, under a minute to go, 45 seconds. Fowler almost loses the ball to Ramos. Leaner, and he's fouled on the play. Is Ramos with the foul, I would suspect. His second foul. Two point, four points in the ball game for Blake Fowler. He will shoot a pair. Makes the first one.
One dribble. Second one is also good. Larkin with the basketball. He's from Clarsville, Arkansas. Listed at 5'11". Doesn't look 5'11". Ramos is 5'9", and they look a lot alike size-wise. Herford with a three. Won't go. Shot clock off. Game clock at 13. And Trent Lyles looks content to dribble it out. Fowler with it now. Six. Just holds the ball. Ramos is trying to foul him. I don't know why. Trying to get the ball. And there is the end of the game. 89-47 is your final score. As the Central Methodist University Eagles move to 2-0 on this young season. Again, we will have uh, one game on our schedule next week of basketball. The women will take on Harris Stowe Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Men in action the next week after that, uh, the next Monday the 15th, against what used to be St. Louis School of Pharmacy, and I'm not sure what they call themselves these days, but I believe they have a name change. So 89-47 is the final score. We're not going to wait for final stats or anything as you watch Sherman boys and all run across the floor. Go to Dad and Grandpa. So I hope the uh, Sherman's out in Colorado. We're still watching so you could see your son, your grandson, and... All the boys out on the floor. For Quentin Norris, is Charlie Brown from Puckett Fieldhouse. We're going to call it off from here. 89-47 is the final score. Wish you all a great rest of the weekend. Remember, you get an extra hour of sleep tonight. Yay! We will see you next Wednesday night here from Puckett Fieldhouse.